So this is the iPhone 16 Pro, and I've been using this phone as my daily driver for the past three weeks at this point. And in this video, I wanna talk about my experience of using this phone, especially as someone who was using the iPhone 13 Pro before using this phone. So I feel like this perspective might actually be valuable for a lot of you watching because let's be honest, if you're using a 15 Pro right now, then without a doubt, this phone is not something you should even consider switching to. However, if you are using maybe a two, three, four, five year old iPhone, then this might actually be something you are probably consider switching and that's a fair decision, I think. So I'll talk about what it kind of feels like taking a three year jump from the 13 to this and hopefully that will help you decide. So I wanna start by talking about some of the obvious things that are noticeable almost instantly, and I think the bezels are one of them. It is quite impressive how thin and symmetrical the bezels are. They do look very nice, I have to say that. Apple has done a great job with this. The other thing you might notice is how light this phone is. So before you pick it up, even right now watching this video, you probably have some kind of perception about how heavy this phone is, but the first time you pick it up, you'll realize that it's a lot lighter than you probably thought. And I think that's a good thing because this year, these phones are getting slightly bigger, specifically around 0.2 inches larger diagonally. So it's nice that they're not super heavy and still fairly easy to use with one hand if that's how you find yourself using your phone. And assuming you will be switching from an iPhone at least two years or older, you will obviously also notice the new material, the titanium. It is nice. I think it looks better than the stainless steel frame, the shiny finish it used to have. And technically, it is also a little bit more durable than stainless steel. However, you should still probably use a case because uh, I made the mistake to not use one and uh, I regret it kind of because I ended up dropping this phone straight onto tile flooring from about three to four feet. And this is the damage that uh, occurred. It is small considering how hard the phone hit the floor, but still, if I had a case on, this would have never happened. Speaking of durability though, this phone also has ceramic shield on the front glass. And I believe it's the second generation this time. So it's supposed to be a little bit more shadow resistant. And of course this phone is still dust and water resistant IP68. So you don't have to worry about it getting splashed at or you know getting wet in the rain or anything like that. And if you do actually end up buying this phone, I seriously think that you should not get this color, the desert titanium. At least personally, I really don't like this color. I think I would rather go for the natural titanium. I got the 15 Pro last year in that color and I think that was a really nice color. I would probably go with that again. So I mentioned the, about the bezels. They look really nice, super thin. I like them. However, the screen itself is also actually really good. It's nice and sharp. It's color accurate. It gets very bright. It goes all the way up to 2000 nits, which is great because you should have no problems using this phone outdoors, even directly under sunlight. Although you might still be able to use your current phone outdoors without a problem. So the difference here will probably be noticeable, but it might not be a huge difference. This is also an OLED screen. So the contrast ratios are great. The viewing angles are great. And the blacks are actually pure black. The screen also goes up to 120 Hertz. So it's a high refresher screen. And this is one more thing that you might actually notice depending on which phone you switch from. Everything on the screen, all the animations and any kind of movement, especially scrolling as well, will probably feel a lot smoother. Other than that though, there's not much that is new. The dynamic island might be something that your current phone doesn't have. However, personally, it's not something I find myself using at all, pretty much. Now, just before we talk about the next thing, let me quickly tell you about Squarespace. It's one of the best website building platforms out there. And if you're not using it, you're making a mistake. You you gotta at least check it out. Just visit squarespace.com slash pixel, sign up for a free trial. You don't need a credit card. Just pick a template that you like, drag and drop your images, type some text. You can even tell their AI to type the text for you. Super easy to do. And once you have your images and your text, that point you should honestly have a website that is pretty much ready to publish. You can connect a domain if you already have one, or you can get that from Squarespace as well because it's an all-in-one platform. They have everything. And if you are a new customer, you can use my code. You'll get 10% off your first purchase. So you honestly have nothing to lose. At least check it out, the link's below. Okay, now let's talk about what I think is one of the two biggest reasons why you might actually be considering switching your phone in the first place. And I think it's performance. I think over time you might feel like your phone has slowed down. And we also kind of know this that Apple does, I think tend to slow down their phones because of battery life and whatnot. So what's the performance like on this phone? Well, it's really good. In fact, I think now we're at a point where it's kind of pointless to talk about performance on newer phones because 
it's so good that especially if you're doing like everyday tasks like calling, texting, browsing, watching videos, scrolling on social media, you will almost never feel like uh, you're pushing the phone to its limits and you're not. And it is a flagship phone after all. So you are getting the best of the best that is available right now. I think the processor inside your phone really starts to matter when it comes to efficiency because that's the thing that directly impacts your battery life which is the other biggest thing that I think the people really care about and probably why you might wanna switch your phone. So how is the battery life on this phone? Well, from my experience, it's actually been really good. On a normal day, I end up using this phone for four to six hours, sometimes seven, and I'm ending my day with around 20, 30, sometimes even 40% battery remaining. So that's really good, I think. However, my usage doesn't usually consist of using a lot of 5G or using the camera too much or even using the screen at high brightness. That said though, I feel like you can totally kill this phone in a day if you wanted to. I went to an event recently hosted by Best Buy and that day I used this phone a lot. I used the camera a lot. I used 5G all day. I used Google Maps, so navigation, a lot of it. And the brightness was high. And that day, I think I was also able to get around six hours of screen on time, but around 6 p.m. the battery was at 2%, so I had to charge it. Coming from 13 though, there is a huge difference. On that phone, I would usually get around five hours of screen on time and I would end my day with maybe 10% battery remaining. So. This is a nice improvement, but at the same time, it is kind of to be expected. I mean, this is a three year old newer phone. So that's like the least I would expect from this. So it is, you know, meeting my expectations. So that's nice. Also, if you go to the settings and then you go to battery and you tap charging, you will see this new option over here where you can set a charge limit. And I think this is a really nice change because especially if you are someone who's planning to already switch to this phone and then keep it for a couple of years, so two, three years, then this is something you might wanna consider doing because this will make your battery degrade slower than it normally would. Let's talk about the cameras. I think that's also something a lot of people care about, including Apple. It seems like that's all they care about now because if you've seen them talk about this phone in the launch event, they talk about the cameras a lot. And I mean, this year they literally also added a dedicated button for the cameras. So, you know, the cameras are a big part of this phone. You have a normal wide angle camera, an ultra wide, and a 5X telephoto camera. The photos you get from the main camera are nice and sharp. It has good dynamic range, good detail. And one of the biggest things I have noticed on this phone compared to the 13 Pro at least, is how color accurate this phone seems to be most of the times. Other things you might not notice, but are there, are for example, the ultra wide angle camera has a higher resolution now. It's a 48 megapixel sensor compared to the 12 megapixel sensor that iPhones have had for a long time. So now the photos between the main camera and the ultra wide angle camera are going to look a lot more similar. So they won't be as different, even though I think iPhones typically do a very good job. They are very consistent if you switch from one camera to the other, but now it's gonna be even better and that's really good. But arguably the biggest camera related feature on this phone has to be this stupid button over here. <laughs> now I say stupid because uh, yeah, it's not great because uh, you know, I've already made a whole video about it, but I don't really like it. I don't like the placement of this button. I feel like it's in a weird spot because it's too far to use your phone in a landscape position and it's kind of too low for me to use it in portrait. So it's not an ideal spot for either orientation. And then other things this button can do are already available on your screen. So it kind of feels pointless to use this button for anything. In fact, if anything, it kind of makes the experience of taking a photo worse because I have noticed that nine out of 10 times taking a photo with this, you kind of end up shaking your phone. It's really difficult to not move your phone while if you're trying to use this button. However, if you end up using the on screen shutter button, it's a lot better because you get much less shake, which is always a good thing. Now with the 13 Pro, Apple released photo styles and this year with the 16 Pro, they have updated photo styles and they have made them better, I think. You have a lot more options now, a lot more control over the style. And the best thing about it is that it's not permanently burnt into your photo. So if you take a photo in one of the photo styles, you can always change it to another one or change it back to standard, which is something I really like. The selfie cameras is also really good, but the biggest thing that's different over here is that now it has autofocus. So 
the 15 Pro also had it, the 14 also had it, but again, if you're switching from an older phone, then this is something new and it's uh, it's a welcome change. There are many other features to when it comes to cameras like 4K 120 video, you might be new to action mode, cinematic mode might be something new to you, spatial video might be something new to you. There are a lot of things to explore, but generally speaking, the things I talked about are the things that I feel like most people are gonna care the most about. So overall, I think this is a really good phone, but at the same time, it, there's really nothing in my opinion that really stands out this year. I think Apple intelligence was supposed to be that thing, but as we know, currently these phones have zero Apple intelligence, but should you upgrade? That's the most important question. Well, I think if you're currently using an iPhone 13, 13 Pro, or an older iPhone, then it might actually be worth switching to this phone. But if you're using anything newer, like a 14, then maybe, maybe it might be worth switching to this, but you definitely don't wanna force yourself to switch to this, only if you need to. So maybe your phone broke or something, or it stopped working, something went wrong. Then sure, if you're gonna upgrade your phone anyways, then might as well go to the latest and greatest one that's available right now. But other than that, honestly, even if you have the 13 right now, I don't think that you really need to upgrade as of right now. But it is a good phone and it is an iPhone after all, so your experience is going to be very similar. There's, again, nothing really new this year, at least so far. So just maybe, you know, have your expectations uh, kind of low, but uh, you also won't hate this phone if you do end up upgrading. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, consider subscribing and I'll see you later.